Saya sudah media perkembangan semasa pesawat kita terus sahaja ke hotel sama-sama ke LAA. Silakan Syadila di sana. Terima kasih Hisham dan Lela. Baik masuk minggu kedua operasi mencari dan menyelamat pesawat MH. MH370 dan hari ini juga merupakan hari ke-10 sidang media terus diadakan sejak 8 Mac yang lalu dan saya kira ketika ini um, uh, pihak berkuasa telah pun uh, bersedia di atas uh, pentas utama jadi sama-sama kita dengarkan sidang media ini. Minister of Defence and Minister of Transport Dr. Muhammad Dr. Hamzah Zanuddin Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs Malaysia Dr. Azharuddin Abdul Rahman Director General Department of Civil Aviation, Ahmad Jawari Yahya, Chief Executive Officer, Malaysian Airlines System. To start the session for the day, I hereby call upon the Honourable Minister of Transport to deliver his statement. Honourable Minister, if you please. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. During the last 24 hours, the Prime Minister has spoken to the Prime Minister of Australia and the Premier of China. Malaysia's Ministry of Foreign Affairs has sent diplomatic notes to all countries involved in the search and rescue operation. This includes two groups. First, countries in the search corridors, and second, countries from which we are seeking assistance and expertise. For countries in the search corridors, we are requesting radar and satellite information, as well as specific assets for the search and rescue operation. We are asking them to share their land, sea and aerial search, also action plans, rescue action plans with the Rescue Coordination Centre here in Malaysia so that we can coordinate the search efforts. We have asked for regular updates including daily reports on both search activities and details of any information required from Malaysia. We are not at liberty to reveal information from specific countries as the coordinating authority we are gathering all information as part of the ongoing search and rescue operation. Ladies and gentlemen, over the past 48 hours, Malaysia has been working on the diplomatic, technical and logistical requirements of the search for MH370. The number of countries involved in the search and rescue operation has increased to 26. Malaysia continues to lead the overall coordination of the search effort. The Southern Corridor has been divided into two sections according to the International Civil Aviation Organization demarcation. These demarcations were agreed by the ICAO, of which Malaysia is a council member, before MH370 went missing. Australia and Indonesia have agreed to lead search and rescue operations in their respective regions as demarcated by ICAO. Today I can confirm that search and rescue operations in the northern and southern corridors have already begun. Countries including Malaysia, Australia, China, Indonesia, Kazakhstan have already initiated search and rescue operations. The Royal Malaysian Air Force and the Royal Malaysian Navy have deployed assets to the southern corridor. Two Malaysian ships have been deployed, the offshore patrol vessel KD Kelantan and KD Selangor. This deployment also includes a superlink helicopter which can operate from either ship. Australia has already moved a P-3 Orion aircraft to the region of Cocos and Christmas Islands. And today, the Prime Minister of Australia confirmed that Australia will send an additional two P-3 Orion and a C-130 Hercules. A US P-8 Poseidon aircraft will be traveling to Perth today to help with the search. Malaysia has been working with international investigators and aviation authorities since day one. Yesterday, experts from Civil Aviation Administration of China joined the investigation team. Today, officials from the French Office of Investigations and Analysis for the Safety of Civil Aviation also joined the team. These authorities are working with Malaysian Airlines and the DCA to refine data that can help with the search. On, sat on Saturday, 8th of March, the Royal Malaysian Police started investigations into all crew members on board MH370, including the pilot and co-pilot, as well as all ground staff handling the aircraft. On Sunday, 9th March, police officers visited the homes of the pilot and the co-pilot. Officers also spoke to the family members of the pilot and the co-pilot. Police visited the homes of the pilot and co-pilot again on Saturday, the 15th of March. 
The pilot's flight simulator was taken from his house with the assistance of his family. The simulator was reassembled at the police headquarters. At this point, I would like to stress that Malaysia has been cooperating with the FBI, Interpol, and other relevant international law enforcement authorities since day one. I would also like to address the speculation that Malaysia has held back information about the MH370 movements. For the families, I understand that every day prolongs their anguish. I understand because Malaysia too is missing its sons and daughters. There were 50 Malaysians on board the plane. Our priority has always been to find the aircraft. We would not withhold any information that could help, but we also have a responsibility not to release information until it has been verified by the international investigation teams. This responsibility is not only to the families and to the investigation, but also to the search and rescue operations. It would be irresponsible to deploy substantial assets merely on the basis of unverified and uncorroborated information. As soon as the possibility emerged that a plane had carried out an air turn back to the Straits of Malacca, we expanded our search to that area. I would like to reiterate the US investigating team's statement about that decision. Based on the information and data given by the Malaysian authorities, the US team was of the view that there were reasonable grounds for the Malaysian authorities to deploy resources to conduct search on the western side of Peninsular Malaysia. As soon as we verified and corroborated the new satellite information as to the possible last known whereabouts of the aircraft, we recalibrated our search efforts to the northern and southern corridors as announced by the Prime Minister. After my statement, we will release a more detailed map of the northern and southern corridor, which looks something like this. Malaysia Airlines has set up operation centres in both Kuala Lumpur and Beijing to care for the families of the crew members and passengers. MAS has allocated each family a caregiver who will be, given, who will be on 24 hours duty. They have sent more than 100 staff and caregivers to Beijing. The airline gives daily briefings to the families. They provide counselling sessions and they contact families that have elected not to come to Malaysia between two or three times a day. Ladies and gentlemen, over the past two days, we have been recalibrating the search for MH370. It remains a significant diplomatic, technical, and logistical challenge. Malaysia is encouraged by the progress made during such a short period of time, and we are grateful for the response by the heads of governments that, have spoken, that we have spoken to, all of whom have expressed a commitment of assistance. With support from our many international partners, this new phase of the search is underway. Assets are being deployed, and search and rescue operations have begun. And I wish to thank our partners from around the world for their continued support. Thank you. OK, ladies and gentlemen, q and session. We'll start from this corner of the Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Eddie from RDM, RDM Radio. Okay, I've got two questions here. Uh, first question is, setakat ini berapa tak wah berapa wah negara di kedua-dua koridor pencarian itu yang telah respon kepada nota diplomatik yang kita hantar? Dan satu lagi, uh, hari ini Daily Mail telah menyiarkan putih CCTV di KRA menunjukkan kedua-dua pilot kita. Uh, pilot MAS 370 di periksa pada mereka waktu menempati uh, garisan keselamatan jadi anda terima kasih uh, soalan pertama tadi uh, bila kita menghantar diplomatic notes uh, kepada negara-negara yang terlibat dalam dua-dua koridor tersebut uh, kita baru menghantar pagi tadi Secara verbal, uh, daripada 12, daripada 14 negara yang kita hantar, uh, kita telah menerima kebanyakannya daripada mereka, hampir uh, lebih daripada separuh sudah pun kita terima. InsyaAllah saya rasa semuanya akan uh, dapat memberi sokongan dan juga sistem daripada apa yang kita minta. Jadi uh, masalah ini tidak akan timbul kerana kebanyakannya sudah setuju secara verbal. Okay. Mandi, Amir. Yes. Yes. 
Yeah. 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 Local place, local. Uh, this uh, regarding the, I think the what you call the security tape about uh, the pilots being checked at the uh, security checkout. I think that's something that the security personnel of uh, Malaysia Airport will have to respond. Uh, Datuk, uh, Tadashi, Suri Dari Ekstra Wari, ada tak dapat uh, so far what's the forensic radar from countries, uh, Northern Corridor and also Southern Corridor, especially is there any radar received uh, maklumat daripada Dego Gracia and uh, soalan kedua uh, berapa kos uh, pencarian SES takat ini dan adakah akan beri investment kepada negara-negara luar yang turut terlibat dalam SES ini dari segi kos saya agak terhalu kerana negara-negara yang uh, terlibat uh, tidak memikirkan kos yang terpaksa dibayari oleh mereka dari segi kos yang uh, Uh, dibiayai oleh negara kita itu pun tak menjadi pertimbangan setakat mana yang kita mampu kita akan pastikan bahawa ianya dapat, dapat dipenuhi supaya matlamat utama kita iaitu untuk mencari dan mengesan pesawat uh, dapat dikecapi berhubung dengan uh, isu pertama tadi Rada. 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 Oh, um, dari segi uh, maklumat bukan saja dari segi radar tetapi satelit dan uh, juga data berhubung kait dengan uh, usaha pencarian kita uh, menggunakan uh, pesawat dan juga kapal-kapal yang ada kita dah umumkan tadi berapa negara yang terlibat dan kita belum sampai kepada tahap di mana saya membunuh, uh, mempunyai maklumat maklumat untuk dikongsikan bersama-sama dengan media hari ini. Good evening, Dr. Sri. I'm Musulin for the Zalina online. Um, I would like to ask, is the investigation looking into pilot suicide for either the pilot or the co-pilot? And has the investigation revealed any personal problems or money problems that either of them have had? The answer to the first question, yes, we're looking at it. And secondly, um, no, I cannot uh, say uh, for the moment. Thank you. Asma from Vitri. Can you update us on the simulated investigation? Um, the, all that I have is what the uh, Tansu IGP uh, indicated to us yesterday and what was uh, reiterated in my statement today. Okay. So, soalan dia, mengapa ada tak ter, ah, banyak tentera, mengapa tak ambil tindakan untuk semak pesawat itu dan jika tiada, ada tak tindakan kepada pegawai tentera yang bertugas pada hari kejadian? Pertamanya maklumat uh, daripada radar tentera saya dah nyatakan sebelum ini uh, sensitif Tetapi dalam kes ini kita ketepikan kepentingan uh, keselamatan negara Kerana untuk membantu mencari pesawat berkenaan Dan hanya apabila maklumat itu dapat dikolaborasikan dengan uh, sah oleh agensi-agensi antarabangsa Seperti FAA, NTSB, MAIB Also Uh, hanya apabila itu telah pun uh, disahkan uh, ianya dimaklumkan kepada orang ramai uh, dari segi uh, tindakan uh, tentera apabila maklumat itu uh, di uh, di uh, perolehi uh, telah pun dinyatakan oleh um, pihak ket, uh, panglima tentera udara bahawa mereka pada ketika itu tidak menganggapkan uh, kapal terbang pesawat itu sebagai hostile Pahamannya daripada bernama untuk Cik Ahmad Jahari saya nak tanya ada maklumat mengatakan pilot lain yang dijadualkan penembangan yang berisi 7.0 tapi tukar kepada Kapten Sahari pada saat akhir 
Ada kaitan betul dan jika ia Kena apa dan boleh siapa Dan Kapten Zahari juga dikatakan telah mencarani Latihan penerbangan tanpa signal Adakah di bawah kita dalam mas Dan apa keperluan uh, Itu tak betul uh, Dia sebenarnya di roster uh, Seperti yang uh, jadual saya faham maksud soalan tadi dan memang melihat kehadapan kita kena kaji semula kemampuan kita kerana sedikit sebanyak maklumat yang kita telah uh, fungsi bersama dengan agensi-agensi siasatan tadi uh, akan uh, uh, menjejaskan uh, setakat ini tetapi tak pada tahap yang membimbangkan tetapi untuk jangka masa yang panjang memang kita akan lihat kita akan lihat semula uh, kemampuan radar kita dan ini setelah pun saya maklumkan kepada yang amat berhormat uh, Perdana Menteri kita itu kita lihat selepas fokus dan keutamaan kita iaitu untuk mencari dan mengesan pesawat berkenaan dapat dia capai dah ni. Datuk Sri Sofi Ahmad daripada Britarian. Datuk Sri macam mana nak menangani spekulasi bukan spekulasi oleh media asing yang sikit sebanyak dan memberikan impak negatif kepada negara kita. Dengan uh, menjawab setiap spekulasi dan uh, dakwaan setiap hari seperti saya lakukan pada lima setengah hari-hari. Datuk Sri, mungkin pesawat berkenaan semalam Datuk Sri kata pesawat berkenaan tidak membawa barang-barang barang-barang pelaku yang mungkin boleh bentuk kan? Adakah pesawat berkenaan membawa barangan yang berharga atau bernilai yang memungkinkan disambutan dan kenapa PDRM mungkin kenapa PDRM kami masih yang lama untuk menyiasat semula itu di rumah kita sana Ok, menaik kargo kita ada muatan mango steam pergi ke negeri China kalau nak uh, itu boleh kata ponti banyak dalam kalau tak silap dalam 3 ke 4 tan mengustin dari segi uh, dari segi uh, PDRM uh, kalau tak salah saya Tan Sri IGP semalam telah pun uh, menjawab bahawa peringkat awal tidak uh, merasakan bahawa ada keperluan tetapi dengan pendedahan uh, terbaru di bawah ACAS dan juga transponder telah dengan sengajanya ditutup maka mereka kena lihat semula um, evidence yang ada itulah sebabnya mereka kembali ke rumah um, um, pilot dengan co-pilot tetapi saya nak tekankan di sini kerjasama daripada keluarga mereka um, saya dimaklumkan uh, cukup baik sekali Datuk Sri Dari mana Tuan? Dari Puat Dari Melayu Ya Datuk Sri Adakah setakat ini Masih tukar dengan Pendidikan bahawa Pesawat itu Memang dibawa Dibawa oleh seorang Dalam pesawat Dan direncongkan Di kawasan lain uh, uh, Berbanding dengan Ada teori lain bahawa Ada Pihak lain Yang itu mungkin Dikontrol secara remote Bukan oleh Pilot Sri Mungkin ada Usul-usul yang lain dari segi remote saya rasa tak mungkin Ataupun radar hijack sebagainya Itu saya rasa pun tak mungkin Tetapi kalau sekiranya ada uh, bukti dan uh, maklumat yang uh, boleh kita verify Ianya uh, mesti disiasat uh, Keduanya saya boleh mengesahkan bahawa ia terpaksa uh, Kita lihat dari segi fakta-fakta uh, yang sedia ada Bukan saja daripada satu sumber tetapi daripada pihak tentera, daripada DCA, dari disahkan oleh FAA uh, dan juga NTSB uh, Maka apa yang diumumkan dan dimaklumkan oleh Yang Mak Berhormat Perdana Menteri Itulah merupakan apa yang kita pegang hari ini untuk uh, melihat kepada operasi kita Yes, Mus. Datuk Sri, Gerak Fir Darim itu Dalam penyataan yang dikeluarkan hari ini oleh MOP, ASAP, TLDM dan TGM di Kata Koridor Selatan Adakah koridor selatan berada dalam lingkungan koridor selatan? Adakah itu Tidak, dua koridor itu merupakan tumpuan kita. Tetapi di selatan, koridor di sebelah selatan itu uh, tidak mempunyai banyak negara yang terlibat. 
Sebab itu data daripada satelit, daripada radar yang kita dapat kerjasama daripada Amerika dan juga Australia merupakan sesuatu yang mungkin menjadi tumpuan hari ini tidak bermakna bahawa kita tidak memberi fokus yang sama kepada uh, koridor di sebelah utara. Okay, please, sir. Dato' Sri. Have the investigator talk to the, the pilot, the other pilot who, who claim to have heard pilot of MH370 Mamli? Not that I know. Yes, please. Uh, Dato' Sri. Ruliman from MC.com. Um, can you, uh, since the radar is said to be shipped off between uh, the airspace of Vietnam and also Malaysia, uh, how often do the pilot and co-pilot travel the Beijing KL route? And then, is the simulator in, with the captain, uh, is there such a route program into the simulator the whole team? Thank you. First, I can just confirm that the ACAS uh, system was turned off just off Kota Baru and uh, at Igari uh, was the transponder on whether it is a common thing the second part of the question uh, that, that's a normal flight uh, normally the upper the Malaysian air traffic controller will hand over the uh, basically the flight to the Vietnamese air controller at, at Igari it was just about the handing over point when we lost radar contact. Yes, sir. I'm Encik Ahmad Jahari, Angelo from BFR Radio 9.9. My question is, pilots already go through uh, psychological tests before they join. Will MAS uh, relook into the sort of tests that they go? And second part, uh, what are steps that MAS will take to uh, reassure passengers about their safety and what next? Well, first, uh, the psychological test, the psychometric, uh, psychomotor test and all that is a standard uh, procedure for pilot recruitment. Uh, they must go through that test. Um, in terms of uh, going forward, we will obviously look into all this and see whether we can strengthen, tighten all the various, uh, uh, what they call, uh, entry uh, requirement, examination. I call right? As far as the ensuring uh, going forward, uh, we are right now uh, on what we call um, code tango, that's an internal code, which means it's heightened security code. That means that we look at every possible security, um, you know, leaks or, or, or shortcoming. So going on board mass flight is really a heightened security environment right now. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Your question. Uh, Um, when we were discussing earlier regarding the two Iranians that travelled on stolen passports, uh, the manifest was forwarded to, to the Chinese authorities and it was cleared. But uh, as early as uh, only a few hours ago, I've asked the uh, Chinese uh, intelligence and authorities to relook, re-intensify uh, to the, the list that they have with them with, uh, with that possibility. But uh, at the moment, uh, we don't find anything to corroborate uh, what uh, was said earlier. OK, sir. So Yes, sir. This is Anshuman from Reuters. Hi. For the DCA or the MAS CEO, can you please confirm if the plane's emergency location transmitting system, ELTS, was working before the flight took off? Or if not, that would be, because that would be controlled only by the ground staff. So do we have any information on the ELTS account of the same ground? 
For any aircraft uh, before the takeoff, all systems must be made, especially the emergency system must be serviceable. So that's, that's one of the major uh, items that to be checked for flight. So that's it got to be. Uh, sorry, uh, did you ask, was this working or not? Because it needs to be checked that fine. But do we have any information? Was this on or was this off? Every uh, emergency item, like the emergency locker terminal, always put on arm. And it will trigger when uh, it touch water or it is crash, the air can crash. So it's always on arm. Okay, please, sir. Okay. Question, one with the mic. Yeah, the Washington Post, um, for any of you, are you, have you been able to, to determine if any passengers attempted or succeeded in making cell phone calls or placing text messages after the plane rerouted towards the west? I have not. Have not attempted or have not been able to find? Well, uh, so far we have not had any evidence from any uh, uh, what called telephone company. Uh, of any number that's trying to contact. Uh, but anyway, we're still checking. Uh, there, are, there are millions of records that they have to process. Right? Uh, it's, it's being done as part of the investigation. Okay. Yes, sir. Your question, please. Um, there's been some speculation that some of the, the people on the passenger manifest, other than members of the crew, may have had training in flight simulation in some way, or may have been aerospace engineers. Can you tell us if there's any truth to that, and if that's a, a line of inquiry? Uh, well, the passenger manifest has been passed over to the police to check on each, you know, uh, the background of each passenger. We know the background of the crew. But uh, you know we are checking. The police is doing investigation on background questions. All right, please, uh, please, sir. John Sparks from Channel 4 News in the UK. Do you believe that the person who said "All right, good night" in the cockpit was the pilot or the co-pilot? Uh, initial investigation uh, indicated it was the co-pilot uh, who who basically spoke. The last time uh, it was recorded on tape. Do you have a recording of that? The recording is uh, with uh, with air traffic control. And what have you found? Have you analyzed it or stressed? Um, that, is, that is part of our the investigation. investigation. Okay. Cannot be right. Okay, thank you. Please. Hi, sir. So, um, I'm going to need you to be very specific here. Can you tell us what time was the A cars disabled? And what time is the pilots, uh, the co as you say, co-pilots communication to the air control tower which says, all right, good night. What time is this, uh, what is the time for this boat event? Can you be specific, please? Okay, the ACAS, last ACAS transmission was 107. Okay, we don't know when the ACAS was switched off after that. It was supposed to transmit 30 minutes from there, another transmission, but that transmission did not come true. That was the very last transmission of the ACAS, 107. Uh, when it got switched off, any time between then to the next 30 minutes. Okay? Uh, as far as the pilot com or the pilot communication, understand according to the record, it was about 119, I understand. I can confirm that it's 119 where we got yeah. the last transmission from the cockpit that says, all right, good night, But in the, how do you know then that this, the A, because the, uh, so Mr. Minister, Minister, yesterday you said that the ACAS was disabled, uh, you know, before the pilot say, all right, good night to the, the control tower. Isn't that the uh, means that whoever is at the cockpit is misleading the control tower and saying yeah, that? I think they're going to the realm of speculation. Okay. So, so, can you confirm, at least confirm that, sir? No, no, I don't think you want to go down that route. So because what I said yesterday table. were based on facts that have been corroborated and verified. Okay, next question, please, sir. Question uh, from the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. Uh, just, is it unusual that that wasn't detected, for example, from the tower, that the ACAS was switched off? Is that something that would normally come up on a, as a warning light or something like that? No, there's no indication in the tower for the, the communication of the pilot 
at, at that point of flight is from our air traffic control center. And uh, we have no indication at the control, uh, the control center to say that the aircraft uh, was too sharp. And it was, it, was, it was revealed when we did the, when we did the investigation that the, the uh, information was not downloaded by the aircraft to the uh, center in MES. Uh, can I just be honest, just ask another question? I think one was a bit confused as to why or not, or why it's two distinct corridors rather than every possibility in between the two corridors where the plane might have gone. Why is the satellite saying, okay, there's that corridor there, and then in a completely different direction, there's that corridor there? I mean, what about in the middle? Or? It, it, is, it is very technically uh, uh, processed and researched. And we got the six handshake by uh, IMASET, the satellite service provider. And uh, the, the satellite is geosatellite on top of uh, Indian Ocean and looking at a very big area. And they have, they have latitude. And the, the satellite can only see the aircraft at an elevation. And you can see this at an elevation of 40 degrees. And the only, the only point of, the only information of each of the handshake is a time where the handshake took place. And we don't know where it is. There's no indication of no coordinates. Therefore, we calculated from the last point at Straits of Malacca. We calculated well, we, we, we route the aircraft on the minimum speed that 777 could do and the maximum speed. The minimum speed goes to Laos, that ended in Laos, and the maximum speed ended at the edge of Caspian Sea on the North Corridor. Therefore, the, 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 the North Corridor stretches from Laos right to Caspian Sea. Whereas on the south um, south route, the minimum speed goes at this uh, west of Sumatra, and the maximum speed goes down to the south of Indian Ocean. Therefore, the southern corridor stretches from west of Sumatra, no, sorry, east of Sumatra, right to to south of uh, Indian Ocean. And that's been verified by NTSB, FBA, AIB. Uh, the Chinese uh, talked to us today and we showed to them that they, 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 they agree with, with, with the findings. And the, the, the French uh, is already here and we're going to talk to them tomorrow and show them what, what As what you can done. appreciate, the area is concerned is huge. And what we've been doing since the Prime Minister announced it a few days ago is try and narrow this. And that is why um, the countries that are closest and or have assets, whether satellite, radar, or assets on the, on the ground, uh, have been contacted. This is actually to reduce the area that we are looking at at the moment. Minister, okay, please, your question. Can you tell us that last week the, um, the passenger service were told to expect the worst? Uh, is this position being maintained at the moment right now? Is there some hope, more hope, that uh, some passengers uh, are so surviving survive this? The second question is that uh, can you confirm whether foreign security agencies have better and cleared the background from the pilots? <laughs> On a personal basis, uh, for the families, uh, I always pray whether it was, when it's, if it's hope against hope. But uh, the urgency and the ground that you need to cover, uh, it is very important for us to focus. And that's why we have impressed on everybody not to speculate. Because when we have to um, look into speculative uh, reports, it will distract us from our immediate immediate concern, which is to find the aircraft. Hello, it's a question from uh, CNN, Hyung Wong. The US FBI says that they have a team ready to deploy to Malaysia, but it has specifically not been asked by the country to assist beyond the two agents it already has here. That's not is true. there a reluctance to That's not true. That's uh, clearly uh, uh, false. 
um, information because I've been working with the FBI from day one. Uh, City Morning Herald, um, what is the best calculation after 8 11 when the last time it was known, confirmed uh, time, how long after that could it have flown? We uh, estimate it could have another 30 minutes of fuel. De depending on the speed, it's fine. Okay, Lucy wants to know to be used. Uh, it's been 10 days since passed our series of errors, multiple criticisms. Is it not time for the Ministry of the Government to apologise to the Department? I think that's, that's uh, purely uh, erroneous because uh, I've also got uh, a lot of feedback that uh, in the circumstances that we are facing, um, we have been very responsible in our actions. Uh, I think it is. Uh, um, very irresponsible of you to say that uh, this is the case. Yeah. Good evening, gentlemen. You're live on Sky News from London. A couple of questions for you, if I may. There's a report that this flight was uh, on a commercial uh, flight corridor of 5,000 feet. Can you confirm that? And do you have any hope whatsoever that this plane could still be attacked or have you given up hope? Well, uh, as far as uh, the report at 5,000 feet, uh, we're not aware of that report. Uh, we, we, I, I think it's something that the investigation team has to look into. It doesn't come from us. Uh, it doesn't come from us. The fact that there are no distress signals, there are no ransom notes, there are no uh, parties claiming to be responsible, there's always hope. Yes, Mr. Constructor, and Andrew Steele, as I say, it's been more than 48 hours now since that simulator was taken by the police and investigated. What have you found out so far? Uh, when the time comes, the, uh, the Chief of Police will uh, report that to the media. When will that be, sir? Uh, I'll, check two days. I'll check with you. I'll check with you. Seth Doan, CBS News, just to follow up on two points others have raised. So, uh, one question. The working knowledge is that it was the co-pilot who said, all right, good night. And then the other question, it seems that this APAR system could have been switched off between 107 and 137, but the that communication came as 119. So is it possible the APAR system was switched off after that communication with the, with the uh, controller? Uh, we don't know when the aircraft system was switched off. All we know is the last transmission, and we did not receive the next transmission. Okay. A lot been, I guess the next, a lot has been made that the that the uh, that, that that came after that system had been switched off. To, that the that the pilot or someone in the cockpit communicating this all right good night message came after the system. Been well, uh, like I said, the invention team is looking at all possibilities because they have to go through and run through the proper simulation of the cockpit. The and, and, that, and that is why I yeah. think we need to focus on finding the aircraft. The quicker we get the, to the black box, those questions will be answered. I think we have one more question. One last question. Please, your question. I'm from Xinhua News Agency. At this moment, most of Chinese people are becoming um, increasingly anxious about this incident. But the search and rescue and investigations move slowly. So has um, Malaysia's government ever thought about using any social networking and social media to help with establishing more effective and efficient way of communication with Chinese people? You know, some applications like Weibo and WeChat um, it covers the number of 750 million population in China. And would it assist you with this, actually? Yes, it would. And that's why I'm, I'm on Weibo myself. <laughs> Secondly, I've been on CCTV. And that has been beamed across the world. And the feedback that I've got uh, is very positive in, in trying to try and uh, understand uh, and appreciate what the families are going through. I've always said, that whatever we do, uh, we have to think of what the families are going through. That is why we have to be very responsible in coming out with the statements. And they must be verified and corroborated. Because at the end of the day, if they are not and found to be false, the people that are going to suffer most are those very families that you are trying to protect. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, members of the media. That's all for today. We'll meet again tomorrow.
Baik, uh, begitulah antara uh, istipati ataupun uh, maklumat yang dapat disampaikan dalam sidang media pada hari ini. Dan uh, saya pasti kerajaan juga terus berusaha sedaya upaya untuk mengesan MH370. Malah sehingga kini uh, 26 buah negara telah pun uh, menghantar bantuan. Dan apa yang pasti rakyat Malaysia ketika ini, apa yang dapat uh, dilakukan uh, saat ini adalah doa da doa anda yang tidak putus-putus uh, agar uh, pelbagai persoalan yang ada ketika ini dapat menemui jawapannya. Jadi uh, setakat ini dahulu uh, sidang langsung sidang media yang dapat saya bawakan untuk hari ini. Kita kembali semula bersama dengan Lela dan juga Hisham.